It is 3.30 in the morning. Why did I book a flight this early? Hi! Do you want Katerine breakfast? We're going on holiday. Yeah, we are. Where are we going? Pisa. Emma <laughs> wants to be in the film now. <laughs> I forgot my hat. I packed everything except my hat, my new hat for this trip. <laughs> <laughs> we are both reading Taylor Jenkins' read books. Yes, we are. I'm reading this. I have got about three pages left, and my horrible sister <laughs> won't let me finish it because she, she wants to talk to she me. Wants to talk to her. It's a very tense tennis match that I'm in the middle of watching. Spoilers. Sophie, what Taylor Jenkins' read book are you reading? I actually don't know. <laughs> I'll tell you. What is it called? Maybe in another life. Maybe in another life. It's basically sliding doors, but in book form. Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah. I mean, I've only just started it, but so far so good. One, two, three. Remember how I left my hat? I got a new hat. Ready to run. Ciao! Ciao! Yeah, change of plan. Change of plan. We had a whole. I haven't given them any kind of intro to this. Oh yeah. I haven't given them any kind of intro. We're in Italy. <laughs> That's Italy. We just landed. We had a whole plan for how we're getting into Lucca, which is our next stop. Yeah, it's been a pinned um, message. It's on been our a chat pinned for weeks. message. Turns out that bus doesn't exist. Yeah. So we are in a taxi. In a taxi. Nope. So we don't just make up Italian. <laughs> Looker, and the main square is built around an old amphitheater. Yeah. And look, a Roman. I oh, know. So I came on holiday. I am now in Tuscany. I am on a holiday with my entire extended family. There are currently 18 people in this house. It's so loud outside. Everyone is running around choosing rooms. I've already bagsied mine, so now I'm hiding in here for a little bit. I have brought with me five books for this holiday, and I've already finished one. I actually finished it before takeoff. That book was Carrie Soto is Back, which was brilliant. This was so much fun. This is the latest Taylor Jenkins read. It's about a tennis star. I did not really know anything about tennis, so I wasn't sure if this was gonna particularly excite me, but it's now got me like, oh my god, I need to follow tennis. It was so tense to watch. I was like absolutely gripped, literally like on the page watching other matches. It was so much fun. It's about a woman who is a retired tennis champion. She was the greatest tennis player in the world, like held the most, held the record number of Grand Slam titles. And then someone, five years after she retires, takes over her record. And so she is gonna come back for a final season and prove that she can still be the greatest tennis player in the world at the age of 37. And it's so much fun. It really felt like watching a whole season of tennis, which is something I've never done in real life, but I really enjoyed doing it in this form. But that's done now. I finished that one before the plane even took off. So does that even count as a holiday read? I don't know. I'm gonna give it to my sister. The next book I'm gonna read is Still Life by Sarah Woman, which is set in Italy. It's in fact set in a Tuscan villa and I am currently in a Tuscan villa. This house is absolutely monstrous. <laughs> it's huge. I will give you a proper tour later when it's slightly less manic. For now, I don't think I'm gonna get a ton of sensical filming done tonight because it's chaos, there's people running everywhere. I mean, there's 18 people in this house, 18. I don't think I'm gonna get any more reading done tonight. I think the thing that I most need tonight is a glass of rosé, so I'm gonna go and search for that. I didn't mean to end up here, I have got lost. Good morning. I've just woken up, opened my eyes, looked across the river and look at my view. Isn't that amazing? I immediately went back to sleep for another like three hours, but second time around, the view is still there. I'm gonna take my book down to the pool. It's not over, no, it's only just a gun. I used to have a way with words, but now I trip over my tongue, yeah, yeah. Let's get I'm only on page one and already this is like playing Tuscany bingo with things that I've seen so far on my trip. I just finished chapter one. I'm really, really loving the book so far, but that chapter just finished on something so devastating that I need to go and mend my broken heart with a swim in the pool. 
On this holiday, we have two people reading this book and two people reading this book. And I'm another section down in the book. It's quite fun that my aunt Kate and I are reading the exact same book with different covers because I've got the indie exclusive edition here um, and we're reading it like basically the exact same pace. So we've been able to chat a lot about it as we go. So at the end of this section they're finally heading back to Italy. Section 1 was in Italy and then the whole of section 2 I wasn't expecting to have been in London. I really really enjoyed it but I was like kind of itching for them to get back to Florence because I was so loving reading a book set like exactly where I am. Although there were some fun little places in the London sections that are like very close to places that I work or places that I've been. Um, so that was fun. But I'm very excited now for the adventure back to Florence to begin. Cheers. Cheers. Chin chin. They've made it back to Florence, and this book is just delightful. There's basically no plot, but we're following a ragtag little group of characters, including a parrot who talks, and it's just getting like increasingly whimsical and increasingly delightful. <laughs> After an absolutely exhausting morning filled with activities like lying down and eating bruschetta, we're for a wine tasting. We're in a dilemma. Everyone's gone to get to find a wine bar, but we found a bookshop. Oh, yeah, How do you prioritise? What did you have for supper? Food. 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 What was your favourite thing you had for supper? The food. The food. Okay. I've done something uncharacteristically sensible. The limoncello has come out again downstairs and I've decided to take my book to bed instead. Things I'm particularly enjoying about this book, other than just being able to spot so many references to things that I can actually see around me, which is very exciting. I'm loving the parrot. You can see on the front cover here, there is a parrot in this book and the parrot is hilarious and seems to have a full personality of his own and chime up with hilarious insights and sometimes knows that he overstepped and apologises and looks ashamed. So loving the parrot. Also loving just like tiny little things like there's a recurring joke about one of the characters who keeps every time you see him he has a new girlfriend and he's going through alphabetically. So he had dated a Denise and then I can't remember the E. Then there was a Fanula a Gwyneth. Now he's dating a Haley. It's just a subtle little running joke and I'm loving it. This book is like the definition of no plot, just vibes. There's very little happening. It's just such a great cast of characters. You just love watching them get on with their eccentric little lives. There is a character who was in the first section of this book and we haven't seen her since. And I'm really hoping that she comes back because I found her intriguing and also a brilliant character. So I'm holding out hope that she's going to reappear. The funniest thing about this book is that not only is the majority of it set here where I am in Italy, then you get little flashbacks to London and she's going to a cafe that literally I have been to, it's by my office. So I write this book. a little story about what I've been doing this morning. I've been lying in bed messaging Sarah Winman, i.e. the author of Still Life, and I'll tell you for why. So, you know, I said yesterday that there was a cafe in the book that I have been to. I said this to Raph, because we've been to this cafe together, and she was like, mm, no, it doesn't really make sense for the geography of that book for that to be the same one that we went to. And I was like, why would you ruin my dreams? So I messaged Sarah Winman and asked her, is it the same one? And she replied, and said that, but she said that the one in the book is not supposed to be a specific place that exists. She actually just made it up, but that she does know 
of the Beppe's Cafe near where I work. So I'm going to say that counts. She basically based it on that. So then I got to tell her about what we're doing next, which I don't think I've told you a lot about. So at the end of this bit of the holiday, which is where I'm staying with my family, Raph is actually coming today to join us. And we've got a few more days here in this villa with my family. And then Raph and I are off to Florence. And we are actually going to stay in a square called Santo Spirito, which Raph booked specifically because of this book, because she read this book earlier in the year and loved it and was like one of her favorites of the year. And so she wants us to go to some of the places in Florence in the book. So I got to tell Sarah Woman that, that she's basically like designing our holiday. I have more to this story. So when I was a child, I was such a nerd and I used to write for the school paper at my junior school where I had no friends. So I would just write for the school paper and I wrote an agony aunt column and I called myself Eager Emma. And obviously no one would write in, so I would write in fake letters and I would answer them from Eager Emma. Anyway, so I told my sister that I had messaged the author of the book that I'm reading and she was like, it's literally the most Eager Emma story I have ever heard. Oh, these characters keep almost meeting. They just had such a close call. absolutely exhausted for two reasons that I shall tell you. Number one, we walked around in the sun in a very beautiful but hilly town this morning. But number two, more importantly, because I tried to scoop some ice cream before it was fully thawed and it has drained me of all energy. And so I'm going for a nap and I've got something to show you. It's a sleep mask and it's the best thing I've ever owned. It's like completely blackout. It's super comfortable and I'm gonna go to sleep now. Welcome to the best sleep of your life. This is the Manta Sleep Mask and it is going to change your sleeping game forever. This thing is so comfortable, it's completely adjustable, it offers total blackout so no light is waking you up and it's got these lovely iPads to take pressure off your face and eyelids. But wait, there's more. You can get a regular sleep mask like the one I've got, or you can get one with cooling iPads or steam pads to soothe and de-stress. You can get a silk sleep mask for your most luxurious sleep ever. Some people even like to sleep with a weighted eye mask. Since I got my Manta sleep mask, all I do is sleep. My sleep mask is perfect for my regular nighttime sleep and also my afternoon nap, which is a habit I picked up from Italy. Seriously though, these things are legit and have genuinely changed my sleep game. And if you want to get your own, if you click the affiliate link in my description box, then I will get a little bit of money from every one of your purchases. So please, to help me out, do click on that affiliate link below. And then in exchange, I've got a discount code for you so that you can get 10% off your purchase if you use my code SHELF10. So don't forget to click my link and then enter the discount code SHELF10 for 10% off. Now if you don't mind, I was in the middle of sleeping. <laughs> well that was a delight. I have never been a nap person before, I just can't get to sleep, but it turns out this is the game changer. So a reminder, you can use my code, which I'll put in the description box below, and is SHELF10 to get 10% off your own Manta sleep mask. I have no update to give other than that this is a beautiful spot in the lemon trees that I think deserves to make it into the vlog. We've come to the most adorable little town built around the Roman baths and there's actually a couple getting married right now. So last night at about one in the morning, I finally finished Still Life. It's perfect timing because this is all set in Florence, as I said, and Raph and I are off today on the next phase of our adventure, which is a trip to Florence. But also this has been just the most beautiful view to be reading Still Life in. It's set mostly in Florence, with bits in London, as I said, um, and then also bits just like out in the Tuscan countryside. 
which is where I am. And so many things are referenced in here that I could just look up from the page and be like, that's exactly what I can see. Well, that's exactly what we ate last night or drank last night. So it's just been the most perfect book for this trip, really. I really liked the format of this book. So it starts in the 40s and then it just like spans through the decades. You watch these characters grow up, you go on all these adventures with them. And finally, in the last chapter, one of the characters, Evelyn, is turning 99. And we flash back all the way back to in 1901, and we discover more of her story that got kind of hinted at earlier on but we never really got to hear about it and there's like this beautiful love story just kind of tucked away that's been with her through her whole life and it isn't the defining thing of her whole life she has so much more life to live after that point but it is this thread that kind of has followed her so it's just really really beautifully done really gorgeous book and I am so excited now to go and visit all the places from this book and like live their life. They want to take me away Throw me in the backseat rainy day So the whole heart of the book is in this square, the Piazza Santo Spirito and that's here where we are and it's so beautiful and this hotel that we're staying is where the author was staying when she first got the idea for the book so basically I'm going to say that in my imagining of the book, that's where they lived. I try to make new friends so I can pretend I can fall in love again. Your picture on my brain. So far in Florence, we have had my first pizza of the holiday. I've been in Italy for a week without having pizza. We had one for lunch, it was absolutely delicious, and we have had a siesta, so we're basically Florentines. And now, look at this great reading situation that I have only just noticed. I've just read a book set in Florence, then we came to Florence, and now the next book I'm going to read is written by a Florence. Also, look at the ceiling of our hotel room. There's a very funny joke in the book where some of the characters get the giggles because a reverend says to this newlywed guy, um, I recommend that you take your wife up the Duomo <laughs> and they all get the giggles. And there's a character there who's like a, a not out gay man and he's saying, oh, in my experience, people have always enjoyed being taken up the Duomo. Anyway, this afternoon, <laughs> Raph's going to take me in the Basilica. <laughs> Look at this for a spot for a drink. I can't show you the Ponte Vecchio because I'm actually on it. So I did start reading my second book yesterday, Girl Crush. So far, I don't have much report. It's basically just been about masturbating. On a different note, we're off for a day of culture. Are you ready? So we're at the Capizzi, having a drink on a beautiful terrace with you. And I'm going to try and tell you what you've seen. We have seen some Botticelli, some Leonardo <laughs> some Raphael. I have learned what pre Raphaelite means and that it wasn't pre Raphael. We have seen some disco dancing statues. And after we finish our drinks, we're going to go and see some Caravaggio and a lady painter called Artemisia Gentileschi. If you were doubting whether or not I was in Florence, You know what Raph just told me? <laughs> Last time she was in Florence, she took herself up the Duomo. <laughs> then we went to the Academia and saw David and his big hands and tiny schlong. And he was great. I saw David once when I was 19 and went to Florence for the last time for just a day and I thought he was amazing. Second time round, I thought he was just as amazing. Like, how in the hell does anyone carve a person with veins and stuff from a lump of marble? So that was really cool and also especially in the same room you can see a bunch of works in progress statues that Michelangelo did so you can kind of see what it looks like halfway through. Also I will say, just going back to his tiny schlong, when I went here when I was 19, I wrote a whole diary entry about how amazing the statue was and how tiny his willy was. And I think that's harsh. I think it was actually a fine size. Would you agree? Cheers! Buongiorno. It is a Monday morning in Florence. The first key thing that's happened to me today is I bought a hat. The second thing, I've been up reading my Florence Given book. I have a worry that it's not going to be very good. Raph, meanwhile, has been reading Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, along with 
most of the rest of the world I'd say and saying it really is that good. Now we're going to go and climb a hill and get the best view in Florence, nay the world. We made it to the top of a very hot sweaty climb but look how worth it it was! I mean my camera does not even capture how amazing that is. Walking around with nothing in my mind No phone calls in reality we did choose to climb that hill in the actual midday sun. We arrived at the top just in time to hit all the bells start chiming for noon. Which shows that we're fools, but we've now settled down with a beer, which shows that we're clever. We are sitting in Piazza Pitti, Tomelo, Ecco, and we are at an Enoteca, and we have got a grand plan for this lunchtime. We are currently on our second of our bubbles tasting flight. This one has been perfectly paired to go with my tuna tata and it is absolutely delicious. We've got another one coming. Then we have got a wine flight of four red wines coming and Raf is having a mixed salami thing. I'm having a mixed mozzarella. And here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been doing this amazing tasting. We've had three different bubbles. We've had four different red wines, all amazing. But look, this is the way to the loo. All the wine is here. We're back for a final drink on our rooftop bar. Since you last saw us, we have been asleep. Uh, we're going out for supper and we've got such a long journey. I don't actually know if we're gonna get there in time. We've gotta go all the way there. I'm wearing the same clothes as yesterday. We have come for a drink at the most, in the most expensive piazza in Florence. And it was all because I needed the wee, so it was the most expensive wee I have done in Florence. But it was worth it, so it was a very nice wee area. Not though the best wee area we've been to, because on the first night we were here, we went to a restaurant by the Ponte Vecchio, and that wee area had in it a bed, a statue, and a body of water. So this is the second best one. Goodbye, bridge. We're doing the farewell tour and we've come back to our favourite pizza place. We were so tired when we got home yesterday that I forgot to ever actually wrap up this video, but we are home <laughs> and I finished this book. I read the majority of it actually on the plane ride and then just finished the last tiny bit once I got home. So this was Girl Crush by Florence Given. I will say it was better than it seemed it was gonna be from the beginning. <laughs> so it started off as just mainly just very very cringy. I found it so uncomfortable to read. She was clearly like trying very hard. It did get more interesting, partly because I was stuck on a plane and so, you know, you kind of just get sucked into books because there's nothing else really to do. And it got quite dark, so it's about this influencer, it's obviously very much inspired by Florence Gibbons' life. It's about this influencer who suddenly gains hundreds of thousands of followers and it's about how this destroys her mental health. But it's got like a darker twist because you think she is actually being controlled by her manager and there's clearly something going on that you don't know about that you'll slowly uncover. It's also set in 2030 and so the way social media works is a little bit more intense. That bit wasn't very well explored at all. I kept forgetting it was set in the future. She didn't do a very good job of world building but social media is more like all consuming. People kind of plug into it and can spend days like in this virtual world. And so you see her mental health just completely deteriorate. It was very familiar all the kinds of comments that she gets obviously amplified a lot from me but I struggle a lot with just like the tiniest negative comment from people who think that they know me and make these assumptions about me or get cross with me for something that is so seemingly unfair or so minute or like you can't please everyone I find that really really hard and so seeing that amplified to someone with hundreds of thousands of followers I felt really distressed reading it. I actually felt like I had a slightly like, burning sensation of tears behind my eyes while reading it because it was like, this is so unbearable. This is so 
dehumanizing and this is what so many people do have to deal with so i thought that was an entertaining part to the novel and it did make it a page turner and i stopped wanting to dnf it which i slightly had at the beginning however it just wasn't quite good enough for me it wasn't really my thing and obviously this is just my take on it this book has gone to number one so other people are absolutely loving it i just think it could have been funnier there were some very very funny lines so florence given can be very funny and i think a few more of her kind of observational humor a few more of those bits thrown in would have been really good and less of her just trying to be vulgar because a lot of that just came it's really jarring to read some of it. <laughs> I'm not trying to be prudish here, but it was just, it's a little much sometimes. I wasn't quite sure what she was doing with the style of throwing in like director's notes. Felt like I didn't quite understand her vision there. Um, and I also felt like it could have got darker. I think that the main character could have been more morally grey. She's just like a victim of the stuff that happens to her and I think it would be more interesting at this point in the cultural conversations around influencers and cancel culture, I think it would be more interesting to see the main character do something worse, like do something genuinely bad and then have to hold themselves accountable for what they did, rather than just kind of being unfairly cancelled for stuff that was like clearly other people's bigoted opinions or other people's like extreme opinions. Like she didn't really do anything and I think that that could have been a more interesting way to go. It could have been more like the circle where you see our main character like actually lose her own morality a bit more. Whereas in this book she's just losing her sense of self and she's losing her grip on reality. So it was fine, it was fun, it was a good one for a plane journey. I didn't love it. I give it two stars. So that concludes my holiday reading and my trip to Italy. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me. I also filmed a video while in Italy with my dad and my sister where we talked about the books that we've been reading. So I'll link to that one below if you want to go and see them. I know you always like when they make guest appearances. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for new videos every week.